But what's the difference between sedation and anesthesia? And which treatment option is best for your child? Sedation is administered to help reduce the anxiety and irritability that a child patient may experience prior to a dental procedure. A sedated patient will feel relaxed and drowsy, but the patient is not asleep. If sedation is required, you and your Smiletown dentist will choose which method is best for your child. Sedation can be achieved with a drink, pills, laughing gas, a needle, like a flu shot, and with an IV. Typically, children are sedated with a drink, with laughing gas, or both. The effect of sedation on a child is unpredictable. Two three-year-olds can take a drink of a sedative. One will relax in his mother's arms, while the other will try and run around the play area. Movement and vocalization during sedation are normal. It's not possible to predict how well or how long sedation will work. A three-year-old may remain sedated for 15 minutes or for an hour. For this reason, several appointments may be required to complete the necessary dental procedures if a child has many teeth that need treatment while sedated. Unlike sedation, a patient under general anesthesia is asleep. They're in a controlled state of unconsciousness. Dental anesthesiologists are specially trained for three years to administer general anesthesia. General anesthesia is used when you have an operation in the hospital. It's also used for dental procedures that require the child patient to lie still for a longer period of time. Dental patients under general anesthesia do not talk to the dentist or move because they're asleep and the entire procedure will be completed in one appointment.
Welcome to the Department of Restorative Dentistry. The Department of Restorative Dentistry is housed at the Faculty of Dentistry Tigerbuck Hospital and Mitchell's Plain Campus in Mitchell's Plain. The Department of Restorative Dentistry includes conservative dentistry, endodontics and implant dentistry. The department is responsible for the majority of didactic and clinical instruction in the undergraduate curriculum. It also administers advanced graduate programs in aesthetic dentistry, endodontics and prosthodontics. The temporary mandibular joint clinic is also housed within this department. Each departmental faculty member is involved in clinical or basic science research. Full and part-time clinicians both teach pre- and post-doctoral students in the department. The Department of Restorative Dentistry is subdivided into conservative dentistry, endodontics, aesthetics, and prosthodontics.
Conservative dentistry is a branch of dentistry which is concerned with the conservation of teeth in the mouth. It embraces the practice of operative dentistry and endodontics and includes various kinds of direct and indirect restorations of individual teeth in the mouth. In this picture, you can see upper teeth showing a cavity in those two teeth. On the right hand side, you can see the teeth has been filled with a white filling. This picture shows a silver filling that has been placed in a molar tooth. Endodontics is a branch of dentistry concerned with the etiology prevention, diagnosis and treatment of conditions that affect the tooth pulp, root and periapical tissues. The procedure involves the soft inner tissue of the teeth called the pulp. In endodontics, a postgraduate program, PDD and MSc can be done. Endodontics involves root canal therapy this is the process whereby the nerve tissue of the tooth is removed. A tooth needs root canal treatment when it has irreversible damage to nerve tissue of the tooth, decay or caries, extending into the pulp tissue, or trauma occurred on the tooth. These pictures show a patient with a, with a swelling on the right hand side of the face. On the right hand side of the pictures, the picture indicates a swelling inside the mouth. A swelling in these cases indicates irreversible damage to the nerve tissue of the tooth. This picture shows upper and lower teeth. The upper teeth shows a tooth which is discolored due to nerve damage. During treatment of this tooth, root canal therapy will be needed. These pictures shows the first stage of root canal treatment or access opening. The access opening means that the tooth has been opened from the top. In these pictures you can see that the canals have been found and shows the black spots on top of the teeth. The picture shows upper teeth which shows various canals. In these pictures you can see the first treatment which includes the root canal work length determination. The slide on the lower left shows a file inside the tooth to determine the working length of the tooth. The pictures on the right shows an apical locator which is an instrument used to determine the working length of the root. In these pictures, you can see on the left the nerve that has been taken out of the root. During this treatment, the canals are being cleaned and shaped, as you can see in the pictures on the right. Once cleaning and shaping has been completed, the root can then be filled.
In this picture, you can see a clinician busy with the root canal therapy on a patient. The clinician uses the files as shown in the pictures on the right to shape and to clean the canals. The periapical locator is shown in this picture on the left to shape and also to determine the working length of the root. This picture shows the process of irrigation during a root canal treatment. Here you can see a syringe has been used and placed inside the canals to flush out debris and bacteria inside the canals. This is in preparation of a root canal filling. The picture on the bottom right shows the canals of the tooth. This picture shows the root canal therapy, which includes obturation or the final stage of root canal therapy. This is an upper incisor. During this picture or in this picture, you can see that the root has been filled or is busy being filled with root canal filling material. This picture shows an upper lateral incisor. The tooth is severely fractured or broken down, and it actually shows the root canal filling in white. Once completed, the tooth will be built up with filling material or a crown will be placed afterwards. The final stage is called obturation seen in this x-ray. In these pictures or x-rays, it depicts the root canal treatment or final stage of root canal treatment as well as the access opening on the top. The first picture on the top left shows an x-ray showing the canals of the teeth and on the top right it shows the canals of the teeth and on the bottom right it shows the root canal operation. Prosthodontics is the branch of dentistry that deals with the replacement of missing teeth and related mouth or jaw structures by bridges, dentures or implants. In prosthodontics, you are able to do MSc, MCHD or PhD program with prosthodontics. The purpose of the program is to develop highly competent prosthodontists, researchers or academics with an extensive background in biological sciences clinical sciences, research methodology and teaching. The postgraduate program in aesthetic dentistry is a two-year program leading to a diploma in aesthetic dentistry. The module material is covered through lectures, workshops, laboratory activities and literature reviews.
Didactic courses include training in digital dentistry, photography, aesthetic makeovers, botox and fillers, and speaker development. This picture shows photos of a patient undergoing full mouth reconstruction. The bottom picture shows a patient with ceramic crown placements following treatment and preparation of the upper teeth. This is a picture showing a patient with upper teeth. The upper teeth shows old crowns and the crowns has been replaced with new ones. The bottom picture shows the old crowns being replaced by ceramic crowns. This picture shows upper and lower teeth and shows tooth wear of the upper teeth particularly. This picture shows treatment of tooth wear of a patient. The bottom picture shows placements of ceramic crowns which improves the tooth wear of the patient. This picture shows upper and lower teeth of a patient. The upper teeth shows lots of gaps between the upper centrals. During this treatment, the upper centrals, or the gaps rather, were closed with ceramic crowns, shown here in the bottom picture. This picture shows upper teeth and lower teeth, particularly the upper central incisor, which shows here on this upper picture to be shortened. The bottom picture shows the elongated incisor. The tooth has been treated for a gummy smile, meaning the crown has been extended or lengthened, as shown in the picture. We want to wish all the prospective dental students all the best for the rest of the year and good luck.